All right. Onward. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. We're still inching into the creed. We'll get there. This is the review from last week. What do these passages tell us about the source of faith? Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Well, part one and part two, what are they? How do you get faith? You hear the word, and then what happens? Power of the Holy Spirit. Now, just, just so you're clear, this is a logical progression, but not a chronological one. I mean, as soon as the word is spoken, the spirit is there with it. So they're kind of like parallel. They're happening at the same time. The spirit's going with it at the same time. So, by all means, hear the word often. Number one, because God is the creator, we call him the Father. Have we not all one Father? Did not one God create us? For what other reasons do we call God the Father? This is um, drawing on your vast Christian knowledge and Bible history. What are other reasons why we might call him Father? He did create us, to be sure. But what else? Yeah, he did. Did anyone hear a thunderstorm last night? Did he protect you during it? Yes. Yeah, he offers protection. <laughs> did you lose a tree? Really? Yeah, so God is our protector, creator, and we're going to see provider also. Um, we're going to get to Luther's ex explanation in a slide or two, but number two, what instrument and material did God use to create the universe, and then how long did it take God to create it? I believe there's two passages at least. Genesis 1. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. All right. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning. The first day. What did God use to create the universe? His word, yeah. His word, his will. Whatever you want to say it. That was, that was it. Something out of nothing. That's, that's what my God does. Number three, what does it, well, do we, yeah, okay, so to that point, how long did it take God to create the world? Six days. On the seventh day, he rested. Was he tired? No. Yeah, he just uh, he rested as a, an example for us to follow. Next, what does it mean that Adam and Eve were created in the image of God? So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Hmm. He had a son in his own likeness, in his own image. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. Can you tell, ignoring the confusing punctuation, what God means when he says that man was created in his own image? It was his design, and how was that design at the beginning of the world, Dave? Was it good or bad? Great. You know that there is no superlative in the Hebrew language. There's no most. There's no best. There's no est of anything in the Hebrew language. So it is always boker tov. It is very good. That's it. So if God does something very good and there's nothing else wrong in the world, it's perfect in every way. That's the image that we were created in. What about Adam's kid? Whose image was Adam's kid created in? His own. And then, what does Jesus remind us in John 3? Flesh gives birth to flesh. Yeah, my kids may look like Jenna, but they still act like me. Yeah. I passed down all of my sin to my children. As you did too. Just saying. 
It's not just me. Okay. Next, this is Luther. What does Luther's explanation of the first article tell us about God the Father's goodness in creation? I do not have someone to read this. I should read this and publish it because there isn't an audio version of the Catechism there. Oh, that's good. I believe that God created me and all that exists, that he gave me my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all my members, my mind and all my abilities. And I believe that God still preserves me by richly and daily providing clothing and shoes, food and drink, house and home, spouse and children, land, cattle, and all I own, and all I need to keep my body in life. God also preserves me by defending me against all danger, guarding and protecting me from all evil. All this God does only because he is my good and merciful Father in heaven, not because I have earned or deserved it. For all this I ought to thank, praise, serve, and obey him. This is most certainly true. Beautiful summary of the Greek. Any questions about that otherwise? Moving on. Number five, Darwin, the theory of evolution opposes the creation account found in the Bible. Share what you know about this theory. What does it say about how our universe came to be, the length of time it took, about people? Let's take the first one. How did the universe come to be? Maybe the Big Bang, that's kind of fallen out of favor lately. They don't know. That's the one that I've heard pro profounded more, that the Big Bang gets beat on a lot just because it goes against a few basic things in science. Well, order to chaos, yeah. Creation, you've heard the whole Lincoln Log thing? This is my favorite one. Where you take a bunch of Lincoln Logs that could make a house, put them into a dryer, start the dryer, open the door. What do you got? Is there a house? Well, it didn't burn them all. If there's a house, what if you did that a billion times? Is there a chance you could have a house? Well, but don't look at me like that. There is a chance you could have a house one time when you open the dryer. That's not a very good chance. But that's why you keep on stretching it out. Now it sounds don't this is this is what this is what they're working with here. It sounds ridiculous, but this is evolution. All right. That's the length of time this took. That's a lot of times opening up that dryer drawer, isn't it? It just takes a while because it had to have happened, right? We're here. So let's just give it a whole long time to do it. All right, what about people? Well, we're not making a Lincoln Log house. We're making a DNA. Just <laughs> the one I use for the children's message and catechism is if you're walking through the woods behind our church, there's a creek back there. You can walk back there, check for ticks afterwards. If you find a cell phone, does that mean that it grew out of a tree root or came out of the ground with the rest of the rocks in the spring? Or did somebody drop it? Somebody probably dropped it, right? Well, the evolutionist would say, no, 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 no. That cell phone, battery and all, even the service with T-Mobile, came out of the tree root somehow. That's how ridiculous evolution is when you, when you kind of press it. That's why you're going to hear some evolutionists say it's possible aliens planted life here. Now, as soon as you reach aliens, well, let's just, why don't we just believe in God? I mean, which is harder? Anyway, agree or disagree? It takes more faith to accept the theory of evolution than it does to believe in the Bible's creation account. It's a lot of Lincoln logs in the dryer opening up. Yeah. And there's a great book, I Don't Have Enough Faith to Be an Atheist. That's a really good one, too. I can give you a... So, anyway. Agree to disagree. The, uh, there are rocks in this earth that are six million years old. Why do you just disagree, Ms. Marjorie? The world is not that old. But let me ask you this. If you went to creation and you took a tree in the Garden of Eden, and you cut it down, would there be rings inside? Yes. That means that God created the world with what? Relative age. How old was Adam when he was created? It doesn't tell us, but he was an adult. As far as we can tell, he could function, walk, and talk. He procreated, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. 
this is the, the, the chicken answered a question. The chicken came first. Okay? It wasn't the egg. God created the world with relative age, including rocks that could be, if it started from nothing, millions of years old. We believe in a very young earth. Think 20,000, 25,000 years. Some people go crazy and go 50. But I say you don't even have to. 20,000 probably where, I, where I'd go at. The greatest degree, the six days of creation mentioned in Genesis, that's supposed to be a star background, may actually be long periods of millions of years each. Yeah, I disagree. When there's evening and there's morning, day one, I, I mean, I don't know how else God could have communicated that as clearly as possible. And you have to do violence to the meaning of basic words to get to that. And then you really want evolution. I don't know why. Yes, Tom? Before creation, there was no time. What was there? God, thank you. He created time, too. Right. What, right. Right. So, before that, there was no time. Yes. And so what's going to happen when God ends the world? What ends also? Time, yeah. So who, who did God make time for? Do I need more time? No, I don't, actually. I just need to be a better steward of the time that I have. Oh, well, I see what you're saying. The whole age thing. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I can't have a conversation with someone apart with talking about time because I don't know how to do that. <laughs> it is. Yes, Tom. He did. And he knew that I was going to be here. Stand before you, Dave. It's a little... We have stand. Thank you. <laughs> Number six is the last one. Agree, disagree. Hebrews 11.3. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. That's a very precise passage. And the Greek words are extremely detailed. The English translation is good. Um, and I suppose it's not really a fair agree, disagree, since it's a passage in the Bible. But what do you think? Agree? Okay, good. Luther said, my God is the Father who made heaven and earth. I take nothing and no one else as God except him alone, for there is simply no one else who can have made heaven and earth. Say this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, we praise you, for we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Lead us to see your power and glory in the things you have created. Fill us with your Spirit, who at creation hovered over the waters that more and more your image might be renewed in us and that our trust in Jesus, the living Word and Savior, might grow stronger and stronger. We ask this in His name. There is just one announcement that did not make it into your worship folder. I sent out an email announcing that I would be passing out flyers today in the neighborhoods surrounding our church and Little Creek Recreation Center promoting our soccer camp. There are a plethora of details. I will make those flyers available for you to take with you to give to people. Um, we have about seven non-members just from the community signed up, and we probably have five or so members at least who would want to come. We're going to cap it at 25 this year to keep the numbers low and just so we get our bearings about us before next year. There's not a lot of room left. Um, so if you do know of someone who would like to attend, please do get the word out and tell me so I can reserve them a spot. So if anyone wants to help pass out flyers, please speak to me afterwards. If not, may God give you all a blessed week and a wonderful Fourth of July.